Hey, beautiful people of the Most High God. I want to take your mind somewhere, okay? We have God, the Creator. So the Creator has a canvas. And He paints this beautiful work of art. Everything He made is on this canvas. That's you, that's me, the beasts of the field, follow the air, the trees, everything He created. The Creator sat at His table and painted his canvas and then he walked away and his creation that's everything on the canvas came one by one and they took their paintbrush and they tried to change his creation that he made you know and then God had a book you know the creator the author he wrote a story for all of those people that he drew on his canvas. And what did they do? They came to the book and they started writing with their pen and rewriting the story that he created for them. And then some of them went to his canvas with their paintbrush and they tried to change the image that he made them. Do you understand what I'm saying? You people could always identify when you do, when someone does you wrong, but you can't identify when you do God wrong. He was the creator. Imagine yourself as being the creator. You created your creation in the image that you made them. Then they came with their paintbrush and tried to change it. And then, they, then there was Satan changing everything on God's canvas and you too. We can be the biggest enemies of ourselves if you understand what I'm saying. The Creator made us in the way that He made us, and we go about destroying creation. Remember, it's Creator creation. So, God, the Creator, created His canvas with all of us, and we, with our paintbrush, hurt His creation, even ourselves. Creation hurting creation. So, when you pray, you need to pray and ask God to forgive you for hurting Him, the Creator, and His creation, which is yourself and all of His other creation, because He's hurt when you did that. Do you understand? God had this canvas, and then came you, and you wrote on His canvas. You changed His creation. You hurt it. You didn't do it. And He gave laws, statutes, and commandments for those beautiful, that beautiful masterpiece he made, which is you, which is me, which is the beast of the field, the fowl of the angels, fall up, the, the fowl of the air, the fish of the sea, and all the things that he created, even the angels. And when we don't listen to his word, you know, his book, so this canvas that he made all these people, there was a book, he wrote a story for all of them too, and he gave them commandments, laws, and statutes to fulfill right so you're the one trying to change god's story for you you're trying to change god's image for you do you understand what i'm saying how would you like it if you drew on a canvas and then your enemy or the person that you made came and started scribbling on it started to smear it with your paint and then you wrote a story for them and they went to change it but they didn't just go about changing their story they try to change other stories of your creation when people manipulate people. Because when you're with God, you, your story is with God. Look at your Bible. Job's story, his, old, his story came with God. Christ's story came with God. Noah's story came with God. Esther's story came with God. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? But when you're trying to live without God... You're not in your story. Everybody's story is with God. So when you're chasing people who are not in your story, when you're trying to rewrite your story, when you're witchcraft and, you, and you're manipulating your story and other people's story, you're not working on your story. That is with God. You understand? Your creation, destroying creation, even yourself. You come with your paintbrush, smearing the canvas. You come, you go by God's book, who is the creator, the author of your story. 
and you start tearing out pages or start rewriting your your own script. If you keep doing that, how are you going to be in alignment with God's story for you? Go through your Bible. King David's story started with God. King Saul's story started with God. Jeremiah's story, God. Daniel's story, God. Joseph's story, God. Israel's story, God. A lot of people are chasing things in their life, but their story doesn't go doesn't align with God. So if you want to be in alignment, then you need to seek God because that's the only way that you're going to be in alignment of your story. I hope you understand that, people of God, that you, your story starts with God and that sometimes we can be our biggest enemies when we we go against the rule book God gave us and the image that God made us in. You try to change to be like somebody else. You try to conform to the world and not being yourself. You got to be yourself and authentic. This generation just teaches you how to be like somebody else. So much copycats. Let's do this challenge. Let's do that challenge. Nobody's authentic out here. I thrive on being authentic and original. I don't like I don't try to be like nobody else. I walk in my own image. I walk in the image that God made me. I don't try to change that image for anybody. I don't conform to the world. I don't conform to what people think. People talk about you when you're different. You know what? They don't talk about people who are all the same. They're comfortable with being mediocre. God never told you to be in a crowd. He told you to stand out. You know what I'm saying? He, he told you to come. So all those people who have those great stories with God, their story came with God. You need to spend time with God to work on your story. When you're not with God, you're not in alignment of your story, people of God. Everybody has a story. Okay? And that's what I want to tell you. Stop destroying your story and your image and changing the things that God made in you with your paintbrush smearing his canvas and stop trying to change the way how you're supposed to live with doing your own commandments and doing your own rules, trying to change his storybook that he wrote for you because he's the creator and the author. I hope this analogy makes sense to you. God has a canvas and God has a book. Don't go changing your image on the canvas. And don't go changing your story by doing things that are not in alignment with your God. Changing your story in his book. Have a blessed day. Happy Sabbath. I love you, people of God. And all of you who do support me with beautiful comments. Because, you know, I don't get paid for this YouTube. No, I don't. I believe that in the word of God, it says, buy the truth and sell it not. So I buy many books which is the truth of God, and I don't sell the word of God. All right? So, and I want a disclaimer to the wicked who come, my wicked family members and friends who think I'm rich off YouTube. You people are delusional. I'm not, I don't get paid from YouTube. I do God's work for free. This is my charity. This is how God wiped off my sins. This is the charity work I do for God's kingdom. And I know the word of God. I don't practice re- for priestcraft. I don't charge God's people to teach them. He anointed me to do something for free. He anointed me. And it's for free I do God's work. You understand? He said, buy the truth and sell it not. I want to save your soul. I want to heal you. I'm a healer. That's what I do for people. I know the gifts that I'm blessed with, okay? And I'm not selling them. Because I never paid for them. Those things were embedded in me from God. He knew me before he met me, he, before I was in the womb. He created those things in me. So I don't charge it to you. That is not the business I'm in. So you, you, you wicked people of friends and family and neighbors who think, daughter, who think Zion's princess is rich off YouTube. I don't get paid for YouTube. I do this for free. The charity work I do wipes the sins off my book. Off my book with God. This is creation and creator. All right? That is what I'm telling you. You people, stop sending your 
money curses and your rich curses because I don't get paid from YouTube. You're so vain and greedy. You're so creepy. Sorry, um, my subscribers and those. I'm just making a disclaimer for those who've been sending all kind of money curses and broke curses thinking Zion's princess is rich off you.